Physically, these two mice are not that different in size, but the weight difference is absolutely insane. 58 versus 38 grams. This is the new Ultralight X from Final Mouse. Uh, first things first, they're moving away from their limited run drop sales model. They're still gonna be selling in drops, but this is gonna be their first mouse that's gonna be in continued production, which is pretty cool to see. And yeah, I've been playing around with this thing over the past couple of weeks. It is really, really good. I mean, I would say it is the best normal sized gaming mouse that I've ever tried. I say normal sized because I have been kind of maining my own custom fingertip mouse and I still very much prefer that, but for this size of mouse that most people are interested in, simply put, this easily beats the new Super Light 2 in pretty much every way. And look, a lot of it is the weight, like 60 grams versus 38 grams, that is a real difference that most people can feel. It's actually going to impact your experience. You know, a lot of people these days are kind of side grading between 55, 60, 65 gram mice, and there are some small differences between between these products, like the shape, the coating, the click feel, no doubt it's a bit of a slight difference in the aiming feel between these products. But I mean, this, you know, legitimately feels like a solid upgrade. I guess the big picture is you don't have to debate the differences here. It's just like physics. You don't have to like search for whether it's going to be worth it or not. Lighter mice have less inertia. They can respond easier to less force. They legitimately feel like they have less input lag when you play with them for this very reason. Final Mouse are actually using a carbon fiber composite material to achieve this. I mean, if this was just ABS plastic with this many cutouts, you would definitely see some like flex and creaking. But I mean, this thing is absolutely rock solid. It's also the first gaming mouse to use a web browser as software. And it's really, really good. I mean, you just go in, you change your DPI, your polling rate, whatever you need to adjust, and then you close it. You can reopen it really easily whenever you need it. But otherwise, it's not running in the background like Logitech, Razer, and everyone else. These guys need to be sitting up and taking notes because this is the stuff that people want. Now, speaking of polling rates, this supposedly can go up to 8,000 Hertz. That update I don't actually have yet. Apparently that's going to be finished in November when customers actually get their models. The one that I have here can go up to 4,000 Hertz, which is kind of like most competing mice at the moment. And most of my testing and own playtime with the mouse, I've been running it at 2,000. Because yeah, super high polling rates. I've done some testing recently that suggests that it's not super worth running. And most of the time, those extra cursor updates are just gonna drain your battery. But yeah, I ran 2000 Hertz on a 540 Hertz monitor in basically the fastest FPS that you can play. And yeah, it felt basically perfect. Now, as for measuring the latency of the mouse, I typically use this thing right here. It's the Nvidia LDAT. You've probably seen it in a few of my videos before. We have a microphone for the start trigger and then a flash on screen when the click is received. And the time delay between those two events is the latency result. You might have also noticed that I haven't really been using it in a lot of mouse reviews, and there's actually a good reason for that. This measures end-to-end -end latency, which includes the latency of your PC. And look, that is totally fine if we're comparing a random budget mouse to the likes of Logitech and Razer, but when we're comparing these top tier options, it's not a really suitable method. So Final Mouse actually made something better and it's this right here. They're calling it the x -Lite. It is a completely standalone device which eliminates PC latency and monitor latency from this click testing equation. And it purely measures the delay between the click signal and that packet being received. I mean, I do have to pull apart and solder the switches to every mouse that I want to test, but it is totally worth it because to be able to completely isolate the testing like this, you actually get super accurate results. And I already know what you're thinking, a gaming mouse company creating their own testing device, surely they climbed into the code and tweaked their own values to make their own product look even better. I thought the exact same thing and I was super reluctant to try this out until they told me the code is completely open source. They even made me flash the code from their GitHub onto this device before I started any testing. This device, by the way, is an off-the-shelf STM32 with a display. You can buy it online for like 100 bucks. So even in terms of the hardware here, there's nothing funky going on. If you're interested in testing this stuff out, Final Mouse said that they're actually gonna sell some of these kits to reviewers and people who are interested in you know playing around with this stuff, or you can just buy the board online and flash the software yourself. Now, along with the x -Lite, they sent a few mice that they tested, but I went through and tested even more than I had laying around from mice that have topped my previous testing like the M2K and also some slower options from Glorious and Jewels. I mean, I pulled apart and soldered all of them. And look, there are people out there that think that all modern gaming mice are basically equal in terms of performance, but you can think again. We've got click latency results as fast as 0.1 millisecond.
seconds, but also as slow as 17.5. If you play on a 240Hz monitor, that's equal to four frames of input lag. And yet, the mice that you see in the lower third here are still using some pretty significant debounce delay before the click is processed, which is a real shame. Because this is how most people will be using their mouse. You know, maybe changing DPI, but not fiddling around with the debounce and the settings, which, you know, sometimes don't even work. And when they do, they do help, I mean, lowering the debounce in the Glorious Model D, for example, but even that, set to zero milliseconds, is not enough to catch the fastest options at the top of the chart. So let's zoom into those. The current fastest mouse that I've tested, and probably in the world for click latency, is the Zorn Koenig M2K. It has a wide connection, a super fast MCU with an 8000 hertz polling rate. The clicks on that thing are practically instant. As for the new Final Mouse ULX, I guess the big picture is that Final Mouse are right up there with the fastest wireless options. In fact, at lower polling rates, while the Superlight 2 and Viper V2 get slower, as you'd expect with longer polling intervals, the Ultralight X actually gets faster. Final Mouse are apparently doing a little trick at 1000 and 2000 Hz since there's more of an empty time window there. If a click is detected, they'll actually send that extra click packet early instead of normally waiting for the next poll. This kind of broke my brain when they explained it to me, like how are they able to do that outside of the polling rate, but apparently they're doing it. And yeah, at 1000 Hz polling, their clicks are about half a millisecond faster than Logitech and Razer, which is not a whole lot, but it's pretty impressive at this level. And yeah, something that we couldn't do before, but now we can see with this new testing, is the precise latency differences between different polling rates, even between the different switch settings on the Superlight 2. So yeah, pretty excited to use the new XLAT for future mouse testing. Especially because soon, this thing will be able to do motion latency as well, where previously I've used a motion rig with a lot of kind of moving parts and things happening. I loved that thing, but it did have its little quirks, and in the end, it did measure end-to-end -end latency as well, which, as as we know is not super ideal when we're looking for these small differences. I've also used another method for this which involves moving two mice at the exact same time and then observing the time delay within mouse tester software, but this as well is far from ideal. Any hint of DPI deviation on any of the mice or any slight off-axis movement will completely skew off the results. I actually tested two identical Superlight 2s with that method and somehow got different results, which should just be impossible. The XLight on the other hand can test motion latency with hard wiring directly to the sensor pins, which is super cool. But there are a few bugs at the moment to iron out since different mice send their motion packets differently, but this will be the proper way to test this moving forward. But coming back to the Ultralight X, uh, yeah, this thing was really, really nice to play with. I think the best way to put it is that if I hadn't created my 28 gram custom fingertip zero mouse, which is uh, this thing here, if you don't know what this is, I'll leave a link down below in the description. But yeah, if I hadn't created this, then this is easily what what I'd use instead. Uh, especially for fingertip grip, there's no real medium-sized mouse out there which gives me that kind of same feeling. The clicks are noticeably lighter than their previous models and the reduced weight is 100% noticeable versus other medium-sized mice. I mean, put it this way, like when I tried the Superlight 2, I had to legitimately ask myself, like, do I maybe actually prefer the Superlight 1? Because the new Superlight clicks are heavier, it feels like the same weight in the hand, and the 2K polling is nice, but it's not not a difference that you can actually notice. The Ultralight X on the other hand, you know, it is a clear upgrade in a lot of ways. For me, the shape works quite well for fingertip grip, which is what I use mostly, but I can claw grip the medium pretty comfortably as well if I really want to. This is definitely one of those mice, kind of like the Superlight, where the shape isn't anything special, but it's definitely worth spending some extra time getting used to, especially here because of how good it is. The super low weight, the light clicks, and the fastest wireless latency out there. The only part where the Ultralight X does not beat the Superlight is of course when it comes to availability. I mean, the Superlight 2, I can go to my local game store and pick like one or five of these things up. That's not really a problem. The Ultralight X on the other hand, I mean, they've got a lot of demand that needs to be met, but this is gonna be a continued production mouse, which is really good to see. And yeah, if the opportunity arises to grab one of these things, I would highly recommend it. It is pricey at 190 bucks, but that's still 100 bucks less than the Razer Viper Mini Signature Edition or whatever that thing is. The new Ultralight X basically stomps on that thing in every single way. 